Well, good evening. We do want to welcome you to the Cumberland Free Will Baptist Church. And uh, this is uh, our uh, Christmas presentation, our Christmas program uh, that the kids have uh, planned. And uh, man, that light is bright, Joey. <laughs> but it is, uh, we are excited to be able to be here tonight. We put a lot of effort uh, past few years into our Easter play. So much so that we've not really done a whole lot for Easter or for Christmas until this year. And uh, I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of moving parts. And uh, we're extremely proud of all the kids and all the workers and all those that volunteered. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer, ask Him into our service, and uh, then we'll get started. So let's everybody pray. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, God, as we come to you, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us. God, we thank you, most importantly, for the reason for the season, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you uh, for coming into this world and being our, our pardon uh, to our sin, being our Savior. God, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for every single person that's represented on the sound of our voice. And God, I just pray that somehow, some way, uh, God, a lot of times we come to a play and it's a cute little theme and uh, the kids are really funny and we get a little bit of a laughter out of it. But God, I pray, Lord, that even with those things, and we are going to have a good time, but ultimately I just pray, Lord, that we can worship you in one mind and one accord. And God, I pray if there's anybody here tonight and they don't know you in a free pardon of sin, that tonight will be the day of salvation for someone. God, we love you and we honor you. We'll give you all the praise, you all the glory. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. A long time ago, in the town of Bethlehem, a Savior was born, which was Christ the Lord. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you doing? What do you mean, what am I doing? We're doing a Christmas play. You know that. What's the matter with you? Look around. Everyone's here. Our parents are even here. Hi, Mom. Well, see, I've been thinking about it, and I'm not going to believe it all or not. What? Don't believe it? Are you kidding me? What don't you believe? I don't know if I believe in a Christmas story. <gasps> here, take some deep breaths. It's supposed to help. Wait, I've had an epitome. You need an epitome? Whatever. I'll tell you the story of Christmas, and you can decide if you believe it or not. Whether you believe it or not, it is still true. And the really good thing is that since it's true, no one can ever take it away from you. All right. If you think it'll help, thanks. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. A while back, there was a young woman named Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi. Do you believe yet? I don't know. Is she supposed to be talking to me? Mary lived in a town called Nazareth. The town is still there. You can go see it. Oh, thanks. Mary was promised to be married to a man named Joseph. Lucky guy. Quiet. One day Mary was visited by an angel of God. Now see, right there, an angel on earth talking to some girl named Mary. I mean, there's no archaeological proof of that. Did you have breakfast this morning? Yes, cereal. Do you have archaeological proof of that? Well, no. My point exactly. So this angel says to Mary, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Doesn't that sound like a strange greeting to you? I imagine that's what Mary thinks. She looks really scared. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. How will this be since I'm a virgin? Oh, oh I know this one. I took hell's class. The angel's going to tell her. The Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. That's not what they told us in health class. I told you. Shh. The angel's still speaking. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a baby in her old age, for nothing is impossible with God. It's amazing what they do to those infertility clinics. Dude, this all took place over 2,000 years ago. Sorry, my bad. Who's this Elizabeth anyway? Did you skip a page? Wait, Mary has one more line. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. And then Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea to see her relative, Elizabeth. Hey, where's she going? Who's this Elizabeth chick? Elizabeth was Mary's older cousin who lived in another town. She had been married to a good man named Zachariah for many, many, many years. Strange. She doesn't look that old. This is an actress. <laughs> <laughs> Months earlier, the angel had visited Elizabeth's husband, Zachariah. Dude, I know you skipped the page. Then the angel had visited Elizabeth's husband, Zachariah, when he had come to offer the sacrifice at the temple. What's the temple? Like church, but before Jesus. Oh. The angel said, Hey, is that the same angel? Yes, it is. See, it was the same angel. We like to try and stay as close as we can to reality as we can here. Oh, yeah. I can see your angel here looks a lot like the real thing. The angel said to Zachariah, 
Don't be afraid, Zachariah. Your angel letter seems to say that a lot. Actually, angels are quite imposing figures. You can look it up in various passages in the Bible where the angelic appearances are recorded. Almost all of them reflect on how frightening the person seeing them become. Dude, are you all right? Anyway, but I ended up having to say it almost every time. Say what? Don't be afraid. Zachariah, your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. And he will help to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. How can I be sure of this? For my wife is well along the years. Whoa, did you just hear that? He called his wife old. Dude, he is in trouble. Oh, he did something worse than that. He questioned the angel. Watch this. I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe the words which will come true at the proper time. Hey, what happened to his voice? Go on. Laryngitis. Power of God. Whoa. You said it. Well, sure that Zechariah didn't say it. <laughs> sure enough, just like that, the angel said to Zechariah, and Elizabeth were soon expecting their first baby, despite their old age, but Zachariah still couldn't speak. It wasn't very long at all before Mary came to visit her cousin Elizabeth. Elizabeth, Elizabeth! Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you that has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he is the mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Mary's visit with Elizabeth and Zechariah lasted about three months, and then Mary went back home to Nazareth. Bye, Mary. Bye. Do you believe yet? I don't know. When Elizabeth's time came, she was delivered of a baby boy, just as the angel had told Zechariah. When it was time to name the baby, their friends and neighbors asked them, What's the baby's name? His name is to be John. But none of your relatives are named John. You have to name him after someone in your family. Zachariah, what do you think about this? What should the baby's name to be? His name should be John. 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 <gasps> Suddenly, Zechariah could speak again. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, for he is come and has redeemed his people. And you, my child, will be a prophet of the Most High. You will prepare the way for the Lord and teach his people how to be saved. Whoa, all that time of science was giving him a lot of time to think about what he would say. And John grew up and became a great man of God, just like the angel had said. And later he'd be known as John the Baptist. He was a Baptist? Let's not get into that right now. And so, that's the end of part one. Do you believe yet? I don't know. Well, let's listen to some music, and then we'll have part two. Will Mary be back? Oh, I'm sure she will. She has a pretty big part to fill. All right, then.
Meanwhile, back in Nazareth, we find Joseph, the man pledged to Mary. Mary is sleeping in his bed. Joseph had a hard day because as soon as Mary got back home from visiting with Elizabeth, it was obvious to everyone that she was going to have a baby. Uh oh. Yep. Now Joseph was a very good man, and so he wanted to be kind and generous towards Mary. But since he knew that the baby wasn't his, he wasn't sure what to do next. But while he was still considering his options, an angel of the Lord came to him in a dream. Oh no, not this guy again. Did you have anyone else who wanted to play an angel? Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. <laughs> you are to give him the name Jesus. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had told him, and he commanded him and took him home. He took Mary home as his wife, but he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son and gave him a name, Jesus. By union, do you mean? Yep, just like in health class. Hi, Mary. Hi, huh, do you believe yet? I don't know. Here, you read a while. Why? Because my mouth is tired. I've been talking all night. Well, that's for sure. Where did you believe on it? Oh, here it is. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that everyone in the Roman world would be counted. Why on earth would someone order something stupid like that? Tax base. Oh, now I get it. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth into Galilee, into Galilee, to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was ex and was expecting a child. Hey, is this almost over? Because I'm getting hungry. Are there going to be cookies? Yes, they're going to be cookies. Of course, they're going to be cookies. They're always cookies. Now read. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her first one son and wrapped him in, and wrapped him in clothes and placed him in the manger, because there was no room for him in the inn. Hi, Mary. Hi. Do you believe yet? I don't know, but that's a very pretty baby you have there. Yes, he is the son of God. And that's the end of part two. Time for cookies? No, time for songs.
Near the little town of Bethlehem, there were some shepherds living out in their fields, watching their flock of sheep by night. And all of a sudden, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and they were really scared. Don't tell me. Not. Oh, no. God, 
for all the things they had heard and seen, which they were just as they had been told. Well, that's that. What a nice Christmas story. Hey, hold it. What happens next? Oh, you don't want to know. Yes, I do. What happened to Mary? What happened to the baby? How am I supposed to be believing Christmas if I don't know what happened? Are you sure you want to know? Yes. Be careful. Wanting to know is the first step to believing. All right. I want to know. Tell me. Well, okay. We'll read together. You start. Not too far away lived King Herod. He was the king over the whole area where Mary and Joseph were living. Hey, why do I like it? Because you have a good taste. Who are those guys? There are some wise men who live in countries nearby. They have come to find baby Jesus. Where is the babe born king of the Jews? We have saw a star in the east that have come to worship him. King Herod knew the ancient prophecies that were that there were be a Messiah born to the Jews. He knew that this was the king they were talking about. He secretly didn't want there to be any king but himself. He called all the Jewish leaders together and asked them, where is the Messiah to be born? He will be born in Bethlehem. King of the Jews, you say? Tell me more. Exactly where does this star appear? So the wise men told King Herod exactly where they had seen the star appear. Go and find him, and when you find him, bring him back and tell him so I can worship him as well. Wait a minute. I don't like this. Herod means to hurt them. It'll be okay. No, it won't. We gotta do something. We gotta warn her. There's nothing to do. Do you want to go on and hear the rest of the story? I don't know. Yes. Okay, then. Let's read. The wise men went on their way, and a star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him, and they opened their treasures and presented them with gifts of gold, of incense, and of mirth. And having been warned of it in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Another route? You mean they didn't go back to Herod? Mary is safe? Yes! Well, not quite. What? Well, hurry up. Keep reading. Here, let me do it. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Oh, no. You're kidding me. Not again. Get up. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. <coughs> Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the baby to kill him. So Joseph got up, took the child to his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where they stayed until they, until they got the death of Herod. Yes, they made it. She's safe. The baby's safe. Even Joseph is safe. That is the greatest story ever. That is the coolest angel I've ever seen. Angel, nice. Good work. So is that the end? Well, almost. Later, Joseph was visited by an angel in a dream and told that Herod had died. So he and Mary and the young child Jesus moved back from Egypt to their hometown of Nazareth. And there, is a, and there it is a very happy ending. Jesus grew up, lived a sinless life, taught about God, who was, a fa who was his father, and went to pay the price for his sins of the world. And now all those who believe in him will have eternal life. So now the question is the same one Mary has been asking you or not. Do you believe yet? Do I believe yet? Yes, you know, I think I do. I really do. You see, it really is a Christmas to believe in. <laughs> that was awesome. Time for punching the papers. Right after another song. I, I do believe, you know, I think it was that angel. He was great.
a wonderful question tonight. Do you believe in Christmas? You think about some of the promises that we've had in Scripture. <clears throat> John 3, 16, you can't wait to go no further than that. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you believe in Christmas? The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Do you believe? You can answer. That's good. Do you believe in Christmas? But the gift of God is eternal life. Do you believe in Christmas? The Bible says in one place, who shall so call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, really what the problem what the problem is, is a lot of times in our life, <coughs> I think a real deep message of the little program tonight was probably something that wasn't even scripted. But wouldn't you agree that most of us, our life is <coughs> the good shepherd is Christ? And ain't most of us like some of these little animals that were, that were running around and you heard the shepherds hollering, hey chicken, <laughs> hey, hey, hey goat, hey whatever. Really, if we're going to be honest, really what the Lord Jesus would probably call us if he called us what we are. He said, hey, donkey, find your way back over here. See, we're going to ask the, uh, the uh, musicians and the, and the kids to sing one more time. And we're going to ask everyone to stand if you would. And we never, one mark of our church, one conviction that we have is we never have a service. We never have a program. We never have a play. We never have a drama. We never have a skit. We're not going to have a musical. We're not going to have anything without an opportunity to pray. Because at the end of the day, we know that if the, the Bible says if you give His Word out, it won't return unto Him void. So we're going to ask the church, if you would, to use this altar. And we want to pray. We want to pray for a good holiday. We want to pray, pray for safe travels. Ultimately, we want to pray to see somebody saved. So I'm going to ask everyone to bow your head and we're going to pray. And then we're going to ask the kids to sing one more time. Dear Heavenly Father, God, as I come to you, I thank you, Lord, for every single thing that you've done. God, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this play. But God, ultimately, I pray right now during this time uh, of an altar invitation that if somebody's here, Lord, and they need to know you and a free partner of sin, maybe somebody's in a backslidden condition. Maybe they've grown cold or indifferent. Maybe, just maybe, through the innocence and the humility of a child's play, we can see that we need you more than any other time of our life. Maybe, God, we just know, Lord, I know in my life I've got a lot of lost people, a lot of lost loved ones. And I pray that maybe we could just come under one name and one mind and one accord and we could pray for them right now. So God, during this time of invitation, I pray, Lord, you fill our hearts, fill our minds, fill this altar. God, that we could be able to petition heaven on somebody's behalf. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Go ahead, guys. <laughs>
Give him a bow. <laughs> Boy, they did good, didn't they? We're absolutely proud of them. We want to thank you uh, for being here, for your attention and your attendance. All the ladies and all the, the mommies, I, I'm guessing there might have been a daddy or two that might have helped. I don't know. But I know there's a lot of mommies that had a lot to do with this. And thanks to the mommies that made sure some of the cattle didn't fall. That cattle, that cattle. Was <laughs> and that chicken. But it's been good to be here. We do want to say we got a couple things I want. They, I was asked to announce. As you leave out of here, uh, Drake Baker definitely gets his wish. If you listen to him, like he was narrating the whole time he was wanting punch and cookies. And so we're going we're gonna to reward that. So as you're leaving, uh, outside around the awning, everybody leaves. Uh, they've got a, a cup of punch and some cookies for you to take yes. home with you. Yes. <laughs> Drake goes last. <laughs> so Drake. Well, we know who's going to be first, don't we? Leave them Josh. Yeah. Josh. But no. anyway, that's just compliments of some of the people that, that's brought that in. So we hope you enjoy just that. Also, the kids of the church, um, definitely make sure you find Miss Lena. Give her a hug. If you haven't got your Christmas ornament, the ones that's involved in our church, uh, team kid, uh, the school, or even some of the Sunday school kids, if you had an ornament made, make sure you pick that up back there. Also, uh, Penny and Rachel's going to be set back there. They've got some a little fundraiser they had done. There's a bunch of Christmas crafts. If you'd like to purchase something for Christmas, it's back there. All that goes to the Christian school. <laughs> Don't forget, no Wednesday night Bible study. And finally, when this is over, I know that there's going to be a lot of people taking pictures with your kids. Uh, just make sure that costumes go back to where they need to go. Uh, a lot of those were borrowed. And then when all that's said and done, if anybody would like to hang out, five or six, seven helpers, and uh, try to pick up and, and sweep up real quick on some of the mess, man, we'd be tickled to death with that. But if you can't, that's more than fine. But I do want to say this. We absolutely uh, pray that you have a wonderful Christmas. We, you know, I think around here a lot of times in, in society, you hear happy holidays. No, it's Christmas. Let's get it right. It is Christmas. It's the, the, one of the, the best day of the year, the day we get to celebrate the birth of our Savior. And uh, so it's been wonderful to be here, and we hope that you get to be your family. And slow down and take time out to be with them. Uh, with no other words, Drake... Yes, sir. Get in that microphone. Right, Dismiss us in prayer. Give me a second. Is it on? Oh, yes, it's on. Okay. <laughs> Everyone bow your heads. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for being able to let us be able to present this to you. And uh, let's hope that someone here has made a decision to trust on you as our personal Savior. And if they not, well, they need to. And uh, I'd like to pray for the food that we're about to eat, like being nourished in our bodies. And uh, I'd like to pray for anybody that can have a safe trip home. And in your holy, precious name, amen.